listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. How to describe a pie chart for IELTS Academic Part 1. Hello there. My name is Ben Worthington, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a deep look at explaining how to describe a pie chart. We're going to look at the structure, we're going to look at the steps involved, and obviously, there's going to be a little bit of, a, of well, a few tips and some vocabulary. And we're also going to just look at a model answer as well. Okay, but before we get started, let me mention our sponsor. Our sponsor is Elsa Speak. You can go to their site at elsaspeak.com to find out more. But with this app, you can get instant feedback on your pronunciation. And actually, they did a study and 95% of the people using ELSA for 10 minutes a day for three months, 95% said that they could express themselves with more confidence in English after using the app. Around 70% said they um, could speak clearer and 90% saw an improvement in the pronunciation. And at the end of this tutorial, I will share a link with you where you can go and get 40% discount on the lifetime plan and you can even get a seven day trial as well. Right then, let's jump into it. So in this tutorial, as I said, we're going to look at how to describe a pie chart for IELTS. Now, this is quite a common task that you'll need to, this is quite a top, a common question, the pie chart. Sometimes you might get two pie charts, sometimes you might get a line chart or a flow diagram, but pie charts are pretty frequent. So let's have a look. We want to get, we want to give the general idea. What I always tell my students is that ideally the reader should be able to create the pie chart from your written description. Now that doesn't mean every section exactly reported, but they should be able to get like an overview and a general idea, not an exact idea, but a general idea of what is happening from your written description. So the first step that I always say is to prepare. So we look for the largest and the smallest sections. Why do we go for the largest and the smallest? Because one, it's going to help us, it's going to force us to use the superlative, which will help with our grammatical range and accuracy score. But also, you're going to get to a general idea quicker. You're going to get, you're going to find the general overview. Now, while we're looking at these sections, we want to we want to determine in our mind what do they represent. Okay, not only Are we going to take note on, okay, is it 30%, is it 40%? But we're also going to say, we're also going to get a clear idea. So we could see something like 40% corn, okay? What does that mean, 40% corn? Well, then we've got to go back to the title and just get it clear in our head that it might be preferences. So uh, 40% of adults in the USA prefer corn as their favorite cereal, for example. Or it could be, we see 40% corn, and it could be 40% of Kazakhstani agriculture is corn. Or agricultural output is corn, for example. So this is what it means about getting the idea clear in our head. Also, while we're doing this, we're looking at the times, the dates, the measurements. So if we're talking about uh, output, it might be in kilos, it might be in tons. If we're talking about preferences, it could be um, American citizens in 2018, in 2021, in 2022, whatever. Okay. Now, what's important is that we get the general idea. And I've said it before. I'm saying it again just because it's really important. We don't want to like focus in and just focus on the corn. We want to get a general idea. So if we're going back to the serial preferences, we want to get a rough idea. 
which is the most popular, which is the least popular in the cereal export output, sorry, in the agricultural example, which is the most popular, uh, which is the cereal that is getting most produced or exported. Okay, we've got to get the general idea. Now, this brings me smoothly into step two, where we organize the findings. Now, I suggest organizing it into two groups. The reason is, is because we're going to have two body paragraphs here. Now, the way you kind of like organize it or structure it is up to you, okay? In the body paragraphs. Some people prefer to, to compare the largest sections altogether. Other people prefer to compare the largest with the smallest. It's up to you. Usually, there'll probably be more data points or more information um, there'll be more information there and it's this makes it easier for example if there's less information you have to really struggle but if there's more information you can make it into the largest sections or you could do the two the largest sections from one year followed by the next year uh, it's really up to you and this comes with practice I hate what I'm saying now which is I'm not saying practice 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 but I'm saying that the more times you do this the easier it obviously gets so here are some kind of like guide some guidance we're looking for the major groups we're looking for the major trends and we're also looking for the exceptions okay by exceptions we might be looking at a chart that shows Kazakhstan agricultural output, Turkish agricultural output, um, and Mongolian agricultural output. And maybe from for Turkey and Mongolia, corn might be the largest output, or wheat might be the largest output. Okay, that's a similarity, and we can start to group that together. If they those two countries have the largest agricultural output is in wheat then we can group that together whereas if the largest agricultural output for Kazakhstan is corn could be an exception to the data this is an example of kind of like a pattern or a pattern spotting spotting so again we're looking for similarities we're looking for exceptions with those similarities we want to group them into uh, groups and this is a specific requirement of the IELTS from the IELTS criteria being able to group the data in our IELTS academic task one course we've got two modules one um, I mean there's qu quite a few modules in fact there's vocabulary there's trends there's tenses but the two important courses uh, the two important modules that our students say they like the most is one is where we very specifically show you which information to choose or how to choose the right information how to select the right information and that's a key key point and then the other module is how to express it how to organize it how to um, basically what I'm saying now like how to group the information how to organize it for a high scoring academic task one now, just to summarize, we've looked at the major trends, we've grouped the data, we've spotted the exceptions, we've managed to um, incorporate any other ideas in the, in the data. For example, you might have a horrible chart and you might not be able to group the data. And then that is a feature of the chart that it's, it's difficult to group. So you can say, in, in effect, that is a group, you can say, each country leads in a different type of cereal produced. For example, Kazakhstan leads in corn, whereas Mongolia leads in barley, and Turkey leads in wheat. And that in itself is a group. We've identified that each country has a different leading cereal, or produces a different type of cereal. Now we've carefully selected the information, we've carefully grouped the information into the biggest producers, for example, or the smallest 
uh, the smallest sections or the largest sections and we've been able to compare them where appropriate maybe different years maybe different countries okay and while we're doing this we are trying to separate them separate all this information into two paragraphs as well these will be our two body paragraphs our first paragraph will be the introduction now you can paraphrase the title and this is why paraphrasing is quite a useful skill to have not only can you use it in IELTS writing task 2 as you've just heard writing task 1 uh, you can also use it in your speaking exam as well just to buy you a few more seconds while you organize your answer now as I said the first paragraph is the introduction so we might have a title that says holiday destinations chosen by Welsh people between 1955 and 2005 now this is a skill in itself that you can just do over and over again by writing by just practicing but we would paraphrase that as the pie chart shows the vacation preferences of Welsh people over a 50-year period starting in 1955 and finishing in 2005 okay the dates will be written as numbers because it just gets too clumsy if we're writing to uh, TWO oh, thousand and five <laughs> it's ridiculous okay so we're obviously going to write them in numbers also we're going to try and substitute we're not going to force it but we are going to try and substitute some of the vocabulary so you may have heard holiday destinations vacation preferences it's pretty much the same I mean vacation does sound a little bit more American but English is a vast vast language so you will be okay you generally speaking though don't mix the grammar the tiny differences between British grammar and American grammar and spellings but with the words you're okay okay so if you are if you do start off with um, American spellings in your writing use American spellings all the way through don't mix it up and likewise if you're using British spellings use British spellings all the way through um, it's not very common in all honesty um, but it is worth it is worth noting now we've done our introduction okay now you can also in this introduction give a brief overview you can say um, the pie chart shows the vacation preferences of Welsh people over a 50-year period starting in 1955 and finishing in 2005 throughout this period there was a general shift from domestic tourism to Mediterranean tourism um, especially favoring such countries uh, especially favoring countries such as Spain Italy and France full stop and that's kind of like the overview now some tutors recommend doing this giving the overview at the beginning just in case you run out of time at the end I think it sounds it seems a little bit more natural at the end but that uh, doing it my way assumes that you've planned your essay and you've got enough time and that you're not going to run out of time so it just depends on you if you're a student who struggles with time management you probably want to get that overview in the first section just so you pick up points for the overview and you're not going to lose it whereas if you are good with your time and you do regularly finish your IELTS essays with a few minutes to spare then stick it at the end because that seems like a more natural place to put the summary and also um, yeah you don't there's no repetition there as either it just seems a natural way to finish now then in paragraph 2 we're going to talk about the information okay we're going to focus on that first group of information that we separated out while we were preparing while we were organizing our findings remember to include the comparisons there as well now in the academic task one course we've also got a quite a few sample sentences that just speed up your progression uh, these include you know like just little ones like respectively so we could use that in in this example we could say by 2005 the most popular destinations 
were Spain, France and Italy with around 20, 15 and 11% each respectively. And that's quite a straightforward sentence and it just helps you. What I did there was just I grouped the leading destinations and I used respectively. And that's it's just a little stylistic element rather than and it, using that phrase you don't have to say Spain reached uh, Spain was 30% was the most popular destination with 30% followed by Italy with 20% and then followed by France with 11% just using that little device there respectively just makes it flow a little bit easier if you go to Google and you put economist daily chart you will see a massive list a massive list of descriptions of chart descriptions done by some of the best writers in the world and I'm not exaggerating the economist has some of the best writers the clearest communicators and it's all in the style that we are aiming for for the exam so I just went there um, and the title a handful of items are driving inflation in America. Now, you see what I mean about the higher level vocabulary? How many of us would have used a handful? A handful of countries, a, a handful of Welsh tourists still prefer domestic tourism. Yeah? And then a driving inflation in America. Just moving back, we could use that. Welsh holiday preferences are driving changes in tourism across Europe yeah it's just that higher level and that was just from the title that I, I got those two uh, useful words let's jump in consumer price inflation has risen to 5.4 percent in America the highest in 30 years you see exactly what I was talking about we've got the superlatives in there and we've got a good use of the adjectives and the, sorry of the verbs has risen to and the tenses there we go I mean and you can only read the summary unfortunately unless you're paying but you could you could tell just from reading the headlines as well we we got some value out there so that's if you just go to economist or go to Google and put economist daily chart or economist graphic detail you'll see some great descriptions there. Now, before we finish, let me just give you a few more tips for interpreting pie charts. Now, when I'm correcting essays, it drives me crazy when I see students adding their personal opinions. For example, if you know that the cost of air travel fell between 1955 and 2005, and you think that was the reason why Welsh people started going abroad to Europe, the Mediterranean, instead of staying in the UK, you do not have to, you do not put it in there. You can only report what you see in front of you on the graph, on the exam paper. Next tip, pay attention to the time frame of your pie charts. Some of them um, will have data from the past some of it might some of them might even have predictions for the future either way you need to pay special attention and use the appropriate tense use the appropriate tense that corresponds to that data now finally if you cannot compare the information don't panic just try and get a summary in some cases there might be too much information there in which case that's when you need to really rely on your grouping skills and as I said at the beginning grouping the largest grouping the smallest and then even grouping the randoms for example um, and the smallest as you just heard is a perfect opportunity for saying a handful of countries a handful of a um, handful of students prefer mathematics some um, lovely descriptions there now then if you need more summaries uh, to write out and just to look at you, we've got a massive selection at ieltspodcast.com just go to google put ielts podcast sample academic task one essay 
we've got pages upon pages. Um, most of them were written by myself, a native English speaker, so the grammar is, should be, <laughs> is going to be tip top. In the next tutorial, coming out in about a week or two, we're going to look at the vocabulary, we're going to look at tenses, and we're going to break down a model answer, and we're also going to look at how to compare two pie charts. Now, one, two things before we finish. Number one, big thank you to our sponsor, Elsa Speak. As I said, this is an app that you can use to help increase your pronunciation. And it's great if you've got your exam. As I said before, if you are in a pickle, which means if you're in a difficult situation, if you're in a pickle, i.e. you have your exam coming up the next day or even a job interview, then you might want to get some feedback on the phrases that you know you're going to be saying. And with this app, you get the speaking, you get the feedback afterwards. Now, if you go to our our site, you can get the Elsa Pro for, for free. You can get seven days of pro membership for free. And if you go to this link, elsaspeak.com forward slash INF forward slash IELTS podcast, you can get 40% off a 12-month membership and 85% off a lifetime membership. Second thing I want to say is that if you are still struggling with IELTS and you need some help, then please get in contact. When you sign up for our mailing list, you'll get some free IELTS materials, but you'll also get our email address where you can send us an email and just tell us what you're struggling with and we can guide you and give you some resources there. And remember, we've also got the course of Jump to Band 7 or It's Free. We are getting some great success there and I love seeing the essays, seeing the improvement um, and students getting the feedback and just you know, getting that motivation, getting to the next level, getting IELTS and just moving on. So thank you very much for listening. Have a great day and all the best with your IELTS preparation. IELTSpodcast.com